Hey, once again, everyone, welcome back to another one of my videos. Um, I'm actually debating whether I should put this one in my Back to Basics playlist or not, because although it is a continuation of how to use a DM13A LED drivers, it's a little bit more complicated, but it's not as hard as it seems. It's just uh, it takes a little bit more paying attention to the wiring. But before we go any further, I just want to remind you guys real quick that Although I try my best to give you guys the most accurate, up-to-date information about this stuff, I am not a spokesperson for Real Sim Control or SimVimX, and I do not represent them. So this is just my opinions of all the stuff and my way of understanding it. So I always recommend you guys go visit their websites so that you can get the latest and best information directly from them. Okay, so here I have um, two DM13As uh, daisy chained. Um, so I just want to start off, you know, by showing you what we're going to end up with and then, you know, once we go through the wiring and everything, I'm not going to disassemble the entire thing because then that would take extremely too much time to put it back together and show you guys all that. Um, but, you know, the principles are going to be the same for the for the wiring of the LEDs to the DM13A. So there's no need to go over all that. I am going to go over all of these wires right here that are connecting one DM13A to the other one. Um, and I'm going to use the same data file that I used for the previous video in which I already had these red LEDs and these green ones over here configured for certain functions. And I'm just going to build on that one and show you how to how to configure the rest of them. OK, so we'll start off by going over to the SimVimX website. Um, as I always like to tell you guys, you know, every time that I record one of these videos, um, the plugin the database version and the way the website looked, you know, might change by the time you guys see this video. So I just want to say that this is uh, version 2.06 of the plugin that I am using today. And this is uh, the database version. They just updated everything today, actually, on the 16th of April, 2022. And actually, when I connected for the first time again into the simulator, it actually updated my firmware. So that means that there was some kind of firmware change in there. Um, unfortunately, the only way you get to see what firmware version you're on is when you uh, have an LCD display. Uh, you can actually see the version number as the controller is starting up. Um, other than that, um, there's really no way to, to tell as far as I know. But anyway, so we'll go back over to the SimVim website now. And we're going to go back to the output section of this uh, website so last time when we were talking about LED drivers, remember we went over this. And if you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend you watch that one first because this one is going to make no sense if you haven't seen that other one first. So we talked about the wiring here, right? So the first one you're going to have to wire like this, um, the way I explained it on the, on the other video. Um, then after that, if you want to do what we're going to talk about on this video, which is daisy chaining, uh, DM 13 A's so that you can use up to 64 LEDs using only one pin on the Arduino Which is extremely awesome if you ask me um, This is the connections that you have to do so they might not make a lot of sense to you right now Just like looking at them or, or the way I'm gonna talk about them right now But once we get into the actual wiring part, hopefully it'll make more sense. So if you consider the the very first DM 13 A that's going to be wired the way I just explained earlier and the way I showed on the other video. Okay, so I'm not going to go over all that, but the main part is, the main difference is that you only need one resistor. I use that one kilo ohm resistor right here to go from the signal line that's going to go to the pin on the Arduino to ground. You don't need to have one for every single DM13A, just one of them is okay because all the pin lines are going to be joined together as you'll see in a little bit okay and the resistor that's on the rext which is the one that controls the, how bright your leds are that one you need to have one on each dm13a out of pin number 23 which is the upper right hand one on the second one down okay and that one you can have a different one in each one depending on let's say on one dm13a you're using some dimmer LEDs and you need a lower value resistor but on another one you're using some of those like the super bright green ones that I have then you can use a much higher resistor for those so that it can tone them down 
So that's kind of cool that you can use, you know, a different value resistor for each one, depending on what type of LEDs you're going to be using on each one of those. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go over to my bench over here. And we're going to basically uh, look at this thing right here and go over the wiring. Um, I'm going to try to insert a picture in here as well so that we can be looking at the picture of the wiring and looking at my physical products here on the bench as I'm doing it. So I wired this, you know, pretty much the same way that I wired the other one. I just connected the LEDs and I started wiring um, a little bit of this, not everything. Right now, the only thing I have is the resistor going from pin number 23 to ground is going to go to this ground which joins up with pin number one and eventually this one's going to end up connecting to the other LED driver over here which eventually takes the ground to the common ground that goes to the Arduino. So this is the way I wire this up right here you know as you remember these are you need to connect all the anodes which is the positive together so this is going to be the one going to the five volts coming out of the power supply which eventually ends up on this little uh, prototype board here so all my anodes are soldered together okay that's what I have right here that's what this little spider web looking like thing looks like in here okay then all the cathodes which are the negatives are going to be individually going to each pin on the DM13A so we won't go too deep into the wiring part of the LEDs because I already talked about them on the previous video also. So the only other thing that I want to show you guys is I put a resistor on each one of these green ones right here because these are actually also pretty bright. Even though they're not the super bright ones, they are pretty bright. So I put, um, I believe I put a, a 1.5 kilo ohm resistor on each one just so that they can be about the same brightness as the other ones that are not that bright. Okay. So, we're going to start up with the wiring here now. So remember, this is the, this is the common uh, power for all the LEDs. So we're just going to go ahead and stick that into that right there. And okay, so I try to put the picture up here, um, so hopefully you can see it. Um, I hope it's good enough. Um, so right here, I have the wires that I'm going to be using. And basically, all we're going to do... If you notice on this, we're going to basically just be joining. Remember, we already have the first one wired like this, except that instead of having this resistor right here, um, up here somewhere, we have it directly from pin 3 to ground, which it doesn't make a difference because it could be here, it could be here, it could be here, it could be anywhere along the line as long as it takes you to ground. <clears throat> so that's the only difference that you see between this picture is that I have that resistor directly right here where I'm pointing my yellow thing right here from pin number three going to ground okay so now let's go ahead and start with the with the very top so we want to do the ground is gonna go the pin number one is gonna go to ground you know so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put that right here going from pin number one to pin number one on the other DM13A and it's basically the same thing, you know, you're basically just joining all the grounds together from all the DM13As. Okay, now pin number two, that's the D line. If you notice on the second one, the D line is going to come from the D out on the number one DM13A. So remember that that's the one over here on DM on number one DM13A. That's the pin number 23. I'm sorry, 22. So I'm just going to put that right there. And we're going to bring it over here to number 2 on DM13A number 2. So that's going to be D in. So it's D out over here, D in over here. Which is basically coming out of the first one, going into the second one. Okay, now we're going to take our orange wire, which here in the diagram is like gold or brown. That one's going to go to the pin on the Arduino. But you notice there's only one going to the pin on the Arduino. All the other ones are going to be joining up with that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my orange one, take it from, 
from the pin number three on DM13A number two and I'm gonna put it together with the orange one on DM13A number one. All right, so that's already basically daisy chained together there. Then we're gonna do the purple one, which is the one going to the L line. That one needs to be joined up with all the other ones that are going to the L line. So what I'm gonna do here, you guessed it, I'm gonna take pin number four on DM13A number two, and I'm gonna go to pin number four on the M13A number one, which eventually ends up going to the L line over here. And finally, let's go over to the right side. So we already talked about that. We already have this resistor is going to join with pin number 21 that eventually goes to ground over here on pin number one. That's the way I have it here. So pin number 23, goes to pin number 21 which takes a wire over to pin number one and then that one goes to the ground on this one and then the ground eventually ends up going to the Arduino so that's already done and we already have the blue one which is the D out going to the D in on uh, number two so that's already done so all we need to worry about on this side is basically the five volts and remember this is the five volts that feeds the chip so that one we can connect so pin number 24 we can connect to the 5 volts on number one up there which eventually ends up taking its power from the 5 volt rail coming from the arduino so the only thing you cannot have once again is all the leds they cannot be getting their their power from the Arduino that's why we have them getting their power separately over here from the power supply that I'm putting into this 5 volt rail here okay so that's pretty much it all the wiring is complete all right so now that we got all that done let's go back to the configurator here and we're going to edit the data file that we had from the previous video that I made and all I had on there right now was uh, on pin number 53, I had that DM13A in which I had programmed, you know, a few things into already. So I already have those there. So all we're going to do now is keep adding to it. And what I do for myself whenever I do these kind of things is I, I make myself a little page or something. I write myself some notes. That way I know where I have each LED, you know, what, where I'm going to connect it to. Because that's one of the most important things about this is if you want, you know, to get your lights and everything to work correctly with the correct parameters, you need to make sure that you connect them to the right pins on the DM13As or even when you go directly to the Arduino. Because if you program the wrong parameters to the wrong LEDs, you're going to be wondering why things are not working when they should. So this is what I do for myself, you know, to, to make myself like a mental note about where everything is going. So I'm gonna go ahead and I have a list already uh, because I already played around with this. And oh, that's one thing I wanna talk about right now. So this LED, even though I tested all the LEDs before I put this together, this LED apparently is not working properly. So I was trying to, I was trying to use that one for a certain parameter, but then I just couldn't get it to work. So I switched it to a different pin on the DM13A. I was thinking, well, maybe it's possible that that pin doesn't want to work correctly so I tried it on a different pin where another LED was working and it still wasn't working correctly so I think maybe I damaged it or something when I was playing around with them so I'm not going to be using this one I'm going to be using this one down here for the same parameter that I wanted to use that one for so we're going to go ahead and go to the website here and you know what you guessed it I'm going to go to the Boeing 737 and then we're going to start programming the rest of the stuff here. So, so starting with pin, remember I told you guys that 0 through 15 are for the first DM13A, 16 through 32 are for the second one, and if you were to daisy chain a third one and a fourth one, then that would be 32 to 47, and then 48 to 63. So that gives you a total of 64 LEDs because remember the first one is zero, is not one. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, 
I'm gonna program in the window heat LEDs here. Um, I'm gonna use two of them, and I'm gonna put this one here on number. The the left one I'm gonna put here on number 17, and the right one I'm gonna put on number 16. All right. Then after that we're going to put the autopilot warning disconnect. So guess we gotta go back to the main map. Go down here and we'll do the autopilot. We're gonna do, I believe we're gonna do the the red one right here. And we're gonna put that one on number 18. Okay, and then on number 22, I'm gonna put the flight director one annunciator when it's on. So that would be this one here. And that's gonna be on number 22 right there and number 23 we're gonna put the auto throttle light when it's armed so we'll just stick that in there and notice that you can skip LEDs or you can skip pins you don't have to do them in all in order you know you can if you plan to leave some blank that's fine you can come back and use them later so you don't have to use them in order okay and then uh so that was the auto throttle arm the autopilot autopilot disconnect alert um oh i think that was the one that was supposed to be the the amber one so let's change it um the amber one for the autopilot disconnect is gonna be uh this one right here so replace that one and then the red one which is gonna be that one we're gonna put on number 24. And then we're gonna do number 31 is when we disconnect the auto throttle. So that'll be the red one right here on number 31. And I think that's it. I think that I got everything that I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and save the configuration file. And as always, you overwrite the previous one that's called data.config. So we'll overwrite that. All right, so now we can come over to the simulator here and um, let me see. I need to show this so that I can reload the configuration. And I already have my uh, power supply connected. The one that I have connected here for the five volt rail and the ground is going here to the common ground. I already have it connected because if I didn't, then none of the LEDs will work. So, okay, so remember we're gonna use, um, I'm gonna start off with a fire test because that's the one we did last time. So, oops. So the fire test is gonna be these three over here on this side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and push that. And as you can see, they are coming on. So those are working fine. Now these right here I had for one of them for autopilot command one of them for the autopilot heading and one of them for the altitude. All right, so let's go ahead and start playing with these buttons and switches now. So I'm gonna first turn on the flight director. So we got the flight director on right here. You can kind of see the light right here and you can see my light is on over here. So when I turn that on and off, you can see that it's on and off. So it's working properly. And then on this one, it was the auto throttle. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that one on. And you got the auto throttle on now. Now the command, autopilot command, that should be, I think the middle one up here. So there we go. So we got that one on. And then we're gonna put the altitude for the autopilot. And you've seen this one come on right here. And then we're gonna do the heading select. And that's that one right there. So everything comes on and off as I turn it on and off, so it's working properly. Okay, oh no, now we got the auto throttle going. So that'll be a perfect chance. I'll go ahead and turn off the auto throttle, and now we have that light flashing, which is that one right there. So that's working properly right there. Let me go ahead and throttle down. All right, so you can see that's working properly, oops. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, oops, 
Let's see if I can get it to show. Okay, you can barely see it right there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the, the autopilot. And then you can see that that's coming on right there. So all of them are working properly. So I'll go ahead and uh, silence those two. Okay, let's see. Hmm. There's a yellow one for the autopilot warning. That's that's when it turns, that's when the amber light is on. And then if I disconnect the autopilot, then it'll go to the red one. So you see the amber light stopped flashing and now the red one started. So that's all working good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and silence all that. And we're going to go over to the overhead panel so we can try the window heat. So let's see. All right, so there we got our window heat lights right here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn those on and that should be these two right here, I believe. So I'm gonna turn on one of them first and that one came on. Then I'm gonna turn the second one on and that one came on. Okay, so I think that as you saw, everything worked good. I did you know, try all this out before I got into recording because I didn't wanna be going through all these you know things that don't work or maybe I didn't do something correctly so but I, I did get it right the first time also the first time I tried daisy chaining these so it's not that hard you know the most important part to remember um, I think is that each one of the lines that can be shared like the 5 volts the ground the uh, one that going to the Arduino pin and the one that's going to the L line those can all be daisy chained to the other one and the only one that's going to be different is the D line, which I'm using the blue wire here, is going to come out of the D out of the first DM13A and it's going to go to the D in of the second and the third and the fourth DM13A. So just to, to kind of make it a little bit more, I guess you can say clear, I'm going to pretend I have, you know, this little thing here that I was playing around with last time. I'm going to pretend that I wanted to daisy chain this one too. So let me get myself out of the picture here. So if I wanted to daisy chain this one into the whole system as well, um, there's only one problem that I already put a resistor because I wasn't planning on doing that. So that I put a resistor between pin three and ground right here. So that one I would need to remove if I was gonna do this. But this resistor coming out of the uh, R REXT going to ground which comes around this way and then goes to the main ground that's going to go to the to the common ground eventually that one can stay there um, so in this case what I could, what I could do if I wanted to daisy chain this here let's see if I don't break any of the little legs off so I could just put this 5 volts I could put together with this one here this ground I can put together with pin number 1 wow that pin didn't want to go in so that one can go together with a with a ground on this one that goes to the ground on this one that goes to the common ground on the Arduino. Okay, and then the D, because this is gonna be the third DM13A, so and then connect it to the D the D out over here. So it would be over here. And then the orange one, as I've said before, the orange one will go to the orange one here. Oops which would eventually end up going to the, the pin number three over here and then eventually it'll end up going to the Arduino. And the purple one, which goes to the L line, I can put together with the purple one here. Whoops, sometimes it's pretty hard to put those into the little, the little holes, okay. So that purple one there goes into the purple one here, pin number four which goes to pin number four on the first DM13A and then eventually goes to the L line on the data bus or the the signal bus. If I wanted to connect this right here, you know, I would just connect my LEDs right here to the, to the different pins on the DM13A like that, which you can barely see right there. So I would connect all my LEDs there and then I would just connect the five volts from all these LEDs going to the common 5 volt rail that's coming out of the power supply, the separate power supply. 
So that's how you would keep doing it. You would just keep on doing it over and over like that. So that's pretty much how you would do it. If you wanted to keep on daisy chaining a third one and a fourth one, just remember you could only have four of them at a time. So, you know, you can't do this forever. But for every one pin on the Arduino that you can use up with one of the DM13As, you can connect up to three more DM13As to use a total of 64 LEDs on each one. And that's it. It's not that bad. It's not as hard as it seems, right? So um, hopefully you guys find this video useful as well. All right, so I got a couple more videos in mind that I want to record right now. Um, one of them is about uh, bicolor and tricolor LEDs, um, which can also be used, but there's some caveats to that. So I'll explain those on that video. And another one is gonna be uh, kind of more related to the Cori type switches, but more about the LED uh, differences of Cori type switches, which I have mentioned before on the previous videos, but I'm gonna go over that again relating specifically to those switches. All right, so hopefully I'll try to get those out to you pretty soon. Uh, we are gonna get busy at work once again, you know, but I'll try to do my best to not um, take too long, you know, before releasing the next one after this. All right, well, thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.